Hi, my name is Abby Gatling, and today I want to speak to you about my grandma's buttons. Now, this may be very confusing for you because this is Creativity Uncovered, a podcast where I uncover how everyday people find inspiration, get inventive, and open their imagination. And generally, I am interviewing a guest and exploring how others find creative solutions at home, work, play, and everything in between. But my goal for this podcast is to share with you a whole suite of tried and tested ways to summon creativity. And for me, my grandma's buttons is how I do that. One of my favorite things in the world are this little packet of buttons. There are big ones and small ones and metal ones and plastic ones in all different shapes and all different sizes and all different textures. And for most people, this will just be a nice little packet of buttons. (laughs) However, for me, it's not just a packet of buttons. It means so much to me. These buttons were given to me by my grandma over in Ireland, and I've had them since 2007. (laughs) And since then, I have used some from the packet, I've added some back in, I've shared them with family and friends, and sometimes I just get them out (laughs) and just look at them. And it's not like there's anything particularly special about this collection of buttons, except for the fact that my grandmother gave them to me. And now that she's passed, they are one of the very few things that I physically have that when I look at them, I can instantly recall a wonderful, wonderful memory with her. And the reason why I am talking about my grandma's buttons today is because Recently, I have been thinking about the effect of others on me in terms of my creativity and encouraging my nature to be curious. And there are several people in my life who have contributed to that. My grandma in particular, she she kick-started and she encouraged quite a lot of my loves And I still hold those activities close to me and they're so dear to me even today. The first one was cooking. I love cooking now. And the second is the idea that you can fix your clothes instead of just throwing them away. You can customize your clothes. You can be thrifty with your clothes. You can be resourceful and autonomous and really make a mark and make a statement with your clothes. But mostly one of the things I remember about my grandma, it was that she always sort of encouraged me to try something new and to persist with that thing even when it wasn't really going so well she encouraged me to think bigger than what I was just doing just then and to think of other applications uh, where I could apply this learning and so in 2007 I went over from here in Australia I went over to stay with my grandma for about a month And it was just me and her in her little cottage in Fomoy in County Cork. And at that time, I was trying to heal a broken heart. And I was just spending some really good quality time enjoying the company of my grandma. I absolutely loved that time together. She was telling me the stories of her life, which I'd never heard before. And we were just kind of pottering around her house and and then we're doing the tour of duty, visiting aunties and uncles and cousins and you name it. And I just learned so much just incidentally through hanging out with her during that time. And one specific time that <laughs> sticks out to me was when I bought this coat. I, I was 
hideously unprepared for how cold it was going to be in Ireland when I went over from sunny Queensland, Australia, all the way over to Ireland in the middle of winter. So pretty much as soon as I touched down in Dublin, which is where I landed, and I was staying with my sister, Annie, uh, I had to go out and I bought a coat. I didn't have much money, so I bought a cheap coat. (laughs) And being a very cheap coat, as soon as I got home, (laughs) about three of the buttons fell off just like immediately. And between that time and going down to Cork, um, I was just kind of making do without these buttons on. It was very drafty, I tell you. But I kept the buttons uh, because I know you're supposed to. Uh, But I didn't have anything to fix them on with. And also, I just had no idea how to do it myself. And (laughs) that just seems really silly to say now because now I know how simple it is to sew a button. (laughs) I could have done it straight away. But at the time, 2007, it's a long time ago, guys. I've moved on since then. Anyway, so I spent a couple of weeks in Dublin and I uh, caught the bus down from Dublin to Cork to go visit for Moy and stay with my grandma. And I remember getting off the bus and pretty much the first thing that my grandma noticed was that these three buttons were missing from my coat. And she tutted and she tisked and she said, oh, we'll have to fix that. <laughs> and so... Before we even got to her house, she'd asked me, did I have the buttons? And uh, when I said that I did, she's like, I don't like those buttons. They're cheap and nasty. And of course they were. It was a very cheap coat, (laughs) possibly a nasty coat as well. I'm not sure. And (laughs) so as soon as we got to her home, she brought out this beautiful packet of buttons and all colors and all shapes and sizes and textures. And it was just beautiful. (laughs) And the two of us poured out this packet of buttons and we worked our way through it, trying to find some buttons to replace my buttons. And because it was this beautiful mismatch of different buttons, there wasn't enough for a full set of matching buttons. And of course, according to my grandma, I actually couldn't put the old ones back on because they were just too nasty to use. I thought they were quite nice, but, you know. So instead, uh, I said, why don't we just choose a colour, for example, gold, and then just choose various gold ones. And then they'll at least be matching because of the colour and the size. And (laughs) I remember my grandma being sort of put off by the idea because the thought of anything mismatching was just something she was not keen on and she never really had thought about before but she kind of came around to it a little bit (laughs) she came around to it a little bit uh which was really nice so once we ended up finding this wonderful array of mismatching gold buttons to go on my coat uh she then started to talk about how we would sew them on she threaded the needle with I think quite a bit of difficulty because of her eyesight And she started to sew and I could see that because of the arthritis in her hands that she was finding that very difficult. So I said to her, why why don't you just show me how to do the first one and then I I will do it from there. And she took such care and attention to show me how to do it. And while she was sewing this first button, she was telling me about all the common things that can go wrong with you sewing a button and how to avoid these issues and how to fix these issues when they arise and uh, just some general tips to kind of improve my skills there. It was such a wonderful and encouraging way to learn something new because she put up front the fact that Things may go wrong and it may not be perfect the first time, but that's okay. And it was just so wonderful to hear that. So I watched her do the first one and then I sewed the rest on myself. And they stayed on (laughs) for a long time until I came back to Australia and many years later after sitting in my closet because it is just not cold enough to wear coats here in Queensland 
after quite a few years, silverfish came and ate it in my closet. And I was really, I was really sad about that. But taking from what I had learned from my time with my grandma, I, instead of throwing out the whole coat, I cut off the buttons and I added them to my little collection. And then I cut some squares of fabric from the material that was still okay and not silverfish eaten. And I put that into my sewing kit. And then I saved whatever else I could from the coat uh, before ultimately putting the rest in the bin. And you may have just picked up there that I now had a sewing kit. By this stage, I had a sewing kit. And in fact, that was one of the first things I did when I went home after that trip to Ireland was to put together a little sewing kit with my packet of buttons from my grandma in pride of place. You know, I always saw my mother had a sewing kit and it was so similar to my grandmother's sewing kit (laughs) in an old packet of biscuits, you know, the tins, the round tins. And I kind of just always thought that having a sewing kit was just something resourceful that you had to do in the old days or like my grandma had to or you had to because you had eight kids like my mother had to and, you know, maybe not a huge amount of money growing up so you had to be resourceful and fix your clothes. But, you know, I often wonder thinking about my mother's sewing kit like where does she learn to sew buttons and did she so learn how to sew the same way that I did from her mother my grandmother and I often reflect now that now I can do all this stuff for fun out of, not out of necessity not out of resourcefulness or you know forced resourcefulness I suppose It's a really wonderful skill to have to be able to mend your clothes and I'm so grateful for having learned it. It all started with that button, those buttons on my cheap coat, Um, but that kick-started a love of sewing and crafting uh, my clothes and customising my clothes and that led to me buying a sewing machine and attempting to make my own clothes and cushions and curtains and I just had a great time. I've just been so busy in the last however many years (laughs) but I haven't done it in a long time. Of course I've sewn buttons on because you have to these days and uh, I fixed a few holes in my clothes but I actually haven't created anything new for quite some time until recently you know I I've recently moved house and unpacking the boxes I found my sewing machine and I found the packet of buttons and so it's been making me think about that and think about that time a lot And this leads me to think about the influence that my grandmother had on me in terms of loving the creative skill to be able to fix, mend and create your own clothes. And I wonder whether I will have such an influence on someone else, not maybe about sewing, but perhaps with my cooking or my art or my gardening or even just my problem solving, I really, I really hope that I have the opportunity to share my interests and skills with someone else and perhaps kickstart their love for a creative act that they then can learn and develop and pass down to another person. I just love, I love the idea of passing skills from generation to generation from person to person and I hope it doesn't die out that personal approach doesn't die out because we now have so much more money than we've ever had before and we don't have to be as resourceful or perhaps because there's so much information out there, you literally could just Google it and get on YouTube and learn how to do it. 
just by yourself <laughs> without that personal approach. Uh, look, I think it's so great that we have so much information at our fingertips at the moment, but there's just something so nostalgic and sentimental about learning something from someone that you love and transferring that passion from one to another rather than the really effective but transactional learning of a new skill from YouTube. So I guess I've been thinking about all of this I really want to know who has influenced you in your life and who has given you their equivalent of my grandma's buttons. What skill or hobby or artistic endeavour have you started because someone you love has taken the time to show you the way? And what do you think that you can do to pass on your skills to someone else do you have someone in mind do you have a skill in mind so much of this podcast is talking about the influence that a person's community and the people around them has on their lives and I've shared my stories of how teachers have been both positive and negative influence in my life in terms of my creativity And I've shared stories about how my family and my friends have been so positive in my life. And I just think it's really important to talk about it and to honour these people who are going around enriching our lives in so many ways. So if you aren't comfortable sharing your stories with me on my podcast or by sending me a message, if you're not comfortable with that, then... I encourage you to share your story with the person who has done that for you and just to thank them because they might not know the influence that they've had on you and it's such a wonderful connector sharing those stories. I actually remember going over for my grandma's 90th birthday party. We went back over to Fomoy in Ireland. I think it was 2016 or maybe it was 2017. So about 10 years after I first got the buttons. And I remember going back into that lovely cottage house and going through her things and coming across her sewing kit, which she hadn't used for so many years because of her arthritis and her having moved into a care home a couple of years earlier. And when I saw her after after her birthday party, I... uh, recounted this story to her and she couldn't remember that time with the buttons but she said to me that's lovely and I thought to myself yeah that's really lovely so (laughs) quick quiet break there but that's fine (laughs) R.O.P. grandma love you mate But I want to say thank you to everyone for tuning into Creativity Uncovered today. I really hope that this episode has inspired you to consider what you've learned from others and what you can do to help other people on their journey. And as always, I really hope that it helps you summon creativity the next time that you need it. If you've made it this far, a huge thank you for your support and tuning into today's episode. Creativity Uncovered has been lovingly recorded on the land of the Cubby Cubby people, and we pay our respect to elders past, present, and emerging. This podcast has been produced by my amazing team here at Crisp Communications, and the music you just heard was composed by James Gatling. If you liked this episode, please do share it around and help us on our mission to unlock more creativity in this world. You can also hit subscribe so you don't miss out on any new episode releases.